everyone. Welcome to the Mousy Mix podcast. In case you haven't met me before, I'm Helen and I live in Durham in the northeast of England. It's really lovely to have you here today. I've got a great big long list of sort of little things to chat about today and you've already seen me uh, out blackberry picking and harvesting lavender from my garden which I'm sure lots of you have done as well recently and um, so yeah so a bit more about them shortly and then I'm just going to update you with the one or two things I've been making lots of small things and I've got a list down here to remind me so that I don't miss anything out because honestly the number of times that I've been chatting to you and then I realised oh I forgot to mention something or other anyway so I'll try not to forget um, what, I've, what I want to tell you today uh, so the first thing today I think is that I am just I haven't finished my gnome pattern mitts but they are uh, the second one is well on the way and I have no idea why the light level changes when I turn around Honestly, what a nuisance. Uh, anyway, so you can see, yeah, I'm quite a way through. I have remembered this time to put the placement in for the thumb. And uh, yeah, so I've got one more row of gnomes to do. And then in the next row, the fourth row of gnomes, I'll decrease for the top. So that's going OK this week, this time. Uh, yeah, and the gnomes, two of the gnomes that, that I've made, I haven't made any more gnomes since I last spoke to you, but, but two of the gnomes have got their own mittens. And that happened by accident um, because, uh, well, not, you know, uh, because uh, I posted a picture of two of the gnomes with the first mitten that I made, saying that... I thought they'd misunderstood what I meant by no mittens. And somebody just made a funny comment, oh, I think they want their own mittens. Well, you know, really, you shouldn't say things like that to me. Because what did I do? I made some mittens for the gnomes. So they've got their own tiny little mittens, these two, which I do think are very cute. And they make me smile every time I look at them. So <laughs> anyway, that's... No mittens and mittens for gnomes. Uh, I have uh, started making another story up. Uh, you know, I've been making one up. And again, that happened really by accident because I was joining in with the Enchanted Forest Make Along and a story started to develop all on its own. And yeah, <laughs> I just had to take hold of it and uh, create something. Uh, anyway, I was out to, with a couple of the gnomes, not those two. Uh, but the kind of greenish coloured ones taking photos of them out in the woods on one of my walks and uh, yes I, I took a picture of them one of the pictures I took was of them looking at a pine cone and that just it just sparked a little idea for a story and went from there so that story is very nearly uh, written actually I've done it in rhyme again uh, and uh, I just haven't taken many photos for it yet. So uh, what I have done, though, is been in the last few days, I've been making the other characters that will appear in the story. So they are here. So we have uh, William the Wise, who is a gorgeous little toadstool. I cannot remember the name of the designer, but I'll put it in the description box as usual. I've made this one once before, but uh, bigger because I used DK yarn. This time I used four ply and I used almost the very last of my stash of Rowan Fine Tweed to make him. I really love that yarn and I'm so sad that it's been discontinued. So uh, anyway, so this was the last. So he's an extra precious uh, toadstool, but it's just got a really rusticy look it's just not a solid color but it's very very subtle tweed uh so yeah so he's called william the wise and then we have a gorgeous little squirrel i don't think the squirrel's got a name yet anyway made out of my current favorite felt hand dyed felt by hannah's field on folksy and i just thought it, it makes the most delightful red red squirrel reddish squirrel um which are yeah they're 
they've been a bit of an endangered species in the UK, although I think their numbers are increasing a bit now. So anyway, there, there's a little red squirrel and that was a lovely pattern by um, a designer called Delilah Iris and I bought that pattern on Etsy. Uh, and yeah, he's, he's lovely. So you've got a pattern for an adult and a baby. And this is the baby one because I thought it was sort of the right size for my story. But I think I'm going to have to make the the adult, give him a mummy. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so that's that one. And then finally, another character is the snowy owl here, which is a, a very basic sort of snowy owl. Again, I did find that pattern somewhere, although I adapted it quite a bit because it was, uh, I think the pattern was designed as a tree decoration, Christmas tea, tree decoration, and it was much rounder than this. So I just added some more rounds and uh, yeah. So so there we go, that's the, that's the snowy owl that's in the story. And there is also a little elf, which I made a little while ago. I, I, I bought a sort of a body made out of wooden beads and kind of bendy rope. And then I just uh, dressed her and uh, yeah, she looks, she looks sort of Christmassy, I suppose, but she dresses like this all year round, you know, anyway. Anyway, so I've also started uh, doing some illustrations and uh, so I'll share them with you another time because I haven't done very many yet. I don't know, I'm trying to juggle too many things at the moment, I think. Yeah, anyway, so... Uh, what else? Uh, so I think that's all the things I've made. And I have just started one other project, which I've really, really been looking forward to being able to start uh, because I follow uh, Lucy on Attic24 blog. Um, and she's been for the past few months designing another blanket. I mean, I have made quite a few of her blankets. This one that I'm sitting on here is, is one of her designs. And when I saw she was designing this blanket called the Yuletide blanket, I, the, oh, I just loved the, the colours. I, I always love the colours, but this one, I, I thought, oh, I really have to make that. And uh, so as soon as the yarn packs were available to buy, I, uh, I was there ordering it. And amazingly, I ordered it online from Wool Warehouse and it came the next day. I was really surprised at how quick that was. I hadn't paid for express delivery or anything, but it came the next day. So I have made a start on that. And whenever I um, start on a blanket or one of those Attic 24 ones, when you have about um, 15 balls, roughly about 1500 gram balls of Stylecraft Special DK, usually, that's usually what it is. That's what it is this time. Then I have a particular basket that the, that, that number of balls just fits into perfectly. And so the first thing I will do is to put the balls into that basket. And then uh, I take the, or try to take out the yarn from the center of the ball, because then the balls just stay in the basket the whole time I'm making the blanket and the yarn comes from the middle and yeah, so no problem. But honestly, well, I don't know what you think about trying to get yarn from the center of uh, big balls of yarn, uh, but sometimes it's really, really easy. You poke your finger in, wiggle about a bit and you come out and there's, you know, you've got the end there, no problem. Other times it's a complete disaster. You get a great big lump. Uh, and I've, as, as yet, haven't found out what the knack is, if there is one. I've even watched YouTube videos on how to get your wool from the middle of the, or the end from the middle of the yarn. I don't know. So I ended up with a huge muddle with one of them. So I think it must have, probably half the ball came out of the middle. I don't know why that happened. Anyway, so I get it all prepared and I also make a little, uh, little colour chart not nothing fancy uh haven't i don't mind wool round pegs or anything like that i just find a bit of cardboard and write the names of the colors because some of the colors are quite similar so it's really useful to have that little card there with the little bits of yarn on when you're using so many colors so i'm really really happy with that i have made a start and those colors are gorgeous and i hope i will get it finished by the festive season so that can yeah look really 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 good but not that I'm likely to put it away at the rest of the year but 
anyway. Uh, really nice to have another blanket on the go because I haven't actually made a crochet blanket this year, which is uh, unusual for me. I've been working on my uh, leftover sock yarn blanket, but that's uh, knitted. So yeah, uh, anyway. So I think that's my making of things uh, things out of yarn and felt and things for, for today. Um, I have been in the kitchen though as well, which I'm going to show you shortly. And oh yes, and I have done a bit of uh, painting as well, trying to keep on with practicing and not leaving it too long. Uh, so yeah, so first of all, uh, lavender. You saw at the start, I've been harvesting some lavender and uh, it's not something I do every year but I like to have a stock of lavender in my kitchen store cupboard uh, for using in cooking and my stock had run very, very low. You might have seen a previous episode, I think it was 37, I'll link it at the end in case you want to look, uh, where I made some lavender shortbread. Uh, but anyway, I decided that I needed to, to gather some more and put it into a jar and put it away for the next time I need some lavender in my cooking. And I was I was looking up some information on lavender, as, as I do. I always like to know a bit more about what I'm doing. And uh, lavender's been used, well, it's been documented as being used for over 2,500 years. Certainly the ancient Egyptians used it. Uh, they used it as in part of their mummification process and used it as perfume as well. The Romans definitely used lavender oils for cooking and for bathing and for just generally scenting the air. And they also recognised its uh, antiseptic and healing qualities. And a really interesting fact that I found was that in medieval and Renaissance France, uh, women who took washing in for people were called lavenders or possibly pronounced in a different way. Maybe they were lavande, I don't know, uh, because they washed the clothes in lavender water and they laid them out to dry on lavender bushes. And lavender was also thought to be a remedy or a way of um, stopping you from catching the plague around, you know, around about the 17th century, the Great Plague in London. And well, actually, it spread all around the UK then. Um, yeah, they thought that if you had lavender all around you, it would stop you from catching the plague. Don't think that worked really, but never mind. Yeah, so, so that's my lavender and of course you also saw I've been out uh, blackberry picking. It's lovely at this, this time of year. Actually, do you know, I, I think I really like all times of the year. I know uh, lots of people say that particular times of the year are their absolute favourite season. Um, you know, autumn is quite popular, isn't it? Because it's so, so colourful. But you know, I, I just, I don't think I've got a favourite season. I like them all. And out on my walks at the moment, you can really see that summer's fading. Lots of seed heads, lots of fluffy thistle tops and, and all sorts of uh, just dried seed heads, I think, from the hogweed and things like that. There are still a few flowers clinging on to their flowering season, but uh, yeah, mostly everything is starting to fade away. Uh, but oh, I have to tell you, when I was out on a walk the other morning, I was walking across this grassy clearing that I often walk across, and um, I just saw in the distance a great big light shining. I wondered what on earth it was. And as I got closer, I realised it, that it was a huge spider's web, and it it was covered in dew and glinting in the sunshine, and it was beautiful. So I thought, oh, I need to take a need to take a couple of photos of that because it's so lovely. That was really nice. Anyway, I'm sure that probably lots of you have been uh, blackberry picking recently um, and making things and I've made various things with it in the past but I decided to try two different things that I've never made before and I'm going to show you them now um, when I go into the kitchen. Uh, blackberries have been around for a long time as well uh, similar, similar to lavender, there's evidence that goes back at least two and a half thousand years. Uh, I think the earliest evidence that's been found of blackberries was in the stomach contents of a lady found preserved in a peat bog in Denmark. I can't remember her name, but uh, yeah, she had, uh, well, the, the contents of her stomach con uh, included uh, blackberry 
seeds or pips. Yeah, so yeah, been a long, around for a long time. Anyway, come with me into the kitchen and we'll go and make a couple of things. I'm going to make some uh, blackberry cordial, which is, it, the idea of that is that you can just dilute it and, and drink it. So a bit like orange squash. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can do that. You can add it to other things. So I didn't make a blackberry syrup. It's not as thick and sweet as that. Uh, I read a few, looked at a few recipes first online before I chose one and decided just to make the cordial. Uh, so there's that and then I'm going to make a really, really nice cake and I guarantee you if you make this, you'll love it. It's really, really nice. So off we go. Maybe you'd like to try making either of those things using some blackberries uh, and I will uh, put the recipes as usual as I usually do in the description box if you want to have a go at those. So I'm just going to finish off today just with a, a little short video of me having a go at painting um, a blackberry, a little, little bit of blackberry um, branch that I picked and just thought I would have a go at. Um, I think it does look like a, a blackberry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not brilliant, but I, you know, I'm trying my best and I'm taking you along with me on my journey of trying to improve my uh, watercolour painting skills. So let's, yeah, let, let's relax with a bit of piano and a bit of painting.
Yeah, well, I hope I haven't rambled too much today. Sorry if I have. <laughs> I was trying to squeeze so many things in today. Uh, anyway, um, thank you for, for being with me today. It's uh, really great. And um, keep making comments and giving me a like or uh, just keep watching. That's really good. If you haven't subscribed, you might like to subscribe and, and tap on the little bell as well. So you know when, when I'm next uh, uploading to YouTube. Um, but until then, uh, take care of yourself, keep nice and busy, and I will be back again soon. Okay then, bye.